As another motivating example, let's consider this differential equation given here. The second derivative of y with respect to time is minus y itself. As a note about nomenclature, this is called a second order differential equation because it has a second derivative. So again, it's a differential equation because it has a derivative at all in an equation. And it's a second order because there's a second derivative involved in the equation as well. So just ask for yourself for a moment, what, so a function which when differentiated twice equals minus itself. So we get the same function back but negative after we differentiate twice. Well, a lot of people would propose here e to the minus t. Let me just make this clear. Because that's how you get negative signs out front, right? Well, the left-hand side would be the derivative of the derivative of e to the minus t. And the derivative of e to the minus t once is minus e to the minus t. So one derivative. And then the second derivative comes after that. And you'll notice that when we differentiate again, we get e to the negative t, which is equal to y and not minus y. So that tells you immediately that an exponential solution here is not possible. And if we think about it for a second, that makes sense because every time we differentiate something twice, we're going to get the constant out twice. And there's no way to get a negative sign out of that. Uh, because if I got a negative sign out of one derivative, I'll get another one with a second derivative and we'll be back to where we started, like we just saw here. The second derivative of this exponential is itself again, not the negative of itself. So another way to think about it, okay, well, what else have we got? Uh, definitely not polynomials. If we differentiate them, they change completely. However, something like cos of t might be an answer. Ah, yeah, cos, if I differentiate it twice, it goes cos sine cos back to itself. But there is a sign change that creeps in along the way. So the left-hand side of this equation, just to check it, would be the derivative of the derivative of cos of t. And that would be, take the first derivative of cos is negative sine of t. I have to get back to derivatives here. And that would be, if we take another derivative, that would equal minus what we started with. Let me make this clear. This is y equals cos t. And that's equal to the right-hand side of our equation. And so that works perfectly. Well, if you think about that for a second, go, well, cos had that pattern because when I differentiated the cos to the sine, I get a negative, negative popping out. But the same is true if we had sine as our original function. The left-hand side there would be the second derivative of sine, which is the first derivative of cos, which would be negative sine t, which is equal to minus y, which equals our right-hand side as well. Check. So both, so let's put an arrow there. So both y equals cos of t and y equals sine of t are solutions. And again, all solutions mean here is that when we plug it into the equation, the left and si right hand side are equal or what we plugged in satisfies the equation. But we also saw in our earlier example with the exponentials that we can sometimes generalize a simple solution that we found, like an exponential earlier, into something new. 
Now I'm not going to go through the proof of this, which would simply be subbing this in, but based on the form here, it shouldn't come as a huge surprise that if we had a cos of t, where there's some constant here, if we had that, well guess what, when we differentiate that twice, we still have an a, we're going to have an a and y, and we're going to have the same thing on both sides. But there's no reason why we couldn't also have b sine of t. Again, some constant out front. And this is a new idea. If I have two perfectly good solutions, if I add them together, because differentiation just means we differentiate each term separately, and they'll be there added together on the right-hand side as well, we're going to get a, uh, another way to mix our solutions here. That form there would be a general solution. Anything with this form would satisfy this differential equation. So a couple of notes about this again, some terminology, second order differential equation because we have two derivatives, and we notice that there can be multiple solutions, multiple families of solutions to equations like this as well. So we're heading into very new territory when it comes to solving equations.